Hey, what's up? I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and welcome to another video. I've been editing a trailer for my game Gauntlet of Power because it's launching in a month from now, actually, on Steam. Uh, there will be a Switch version later on, but I needed a new launch trailer for that. And there are two ways as a smaller indie game developer like me. I'm solo, but if you're a small team, there's still two ways to do a launch trailer for your game. One, you grab some funds and find somebody and you pay them to create it or two, you do it yourself. Uh, I went with the option two because of budget reasons. Uh, I have a very tiny budget left for this game. It just needs to be um, launched and hopefully make some money. So I needed a trailer. Luckily for me, I've been doing all these videos on YouTube and I've also been doing other type of videos. So I actually like editing videos. So in this one, I want to give you a couple of tips, something to go by if you're creating your own video. It's not as difficult as you might think, but it's also one of those things that you need to do a lot of times to in order to get better at it. But in order to get to that point, you need to start at some point. So if you plan on creating your own game trailer, a couple of tips after the intro. So tip number one, and that's before you actually start creating your trailer, write down what you want to have in your trailer. A little set list or a little list of topics that the trailer should have in there, because those are the main things that hopefully attract players to your game. Now, usually a game trailer is about a minute, a little bit over a minute, but not five minutes or longer, pretty short and to the point. So make sure you pick a couple of the key points and interests. And you can actually show that to the viewers in a very to the point kind of way. For me, I knew I wanted to show um, the player picking up the Gauntlet of Power, which is actually the name of the title. And it's also the opening of every new game you play in the game. You walk up to a pedestal, it has a gauntlet of power, you pick it up. I also wanted that as the opening for my video. Of course, I need to show what the gauntlet of power is. So the power up and the level up part where you have your uh, mount your weapons and all that stuff. Um, gameplay, obviously I want to show gameplay as soon as possible. I personally always hate trailers that have cool animations and usually this is done by publishers. They have the budget to create these cool animations and things, but it doesn't say tell me anything about the game. And it usually takes like a minute or even two to get into actual gameplay. I don't like those things. Um, show the gameplay. People have very short attention span. And also that's our main interest. What is this game about? Show it. So um, that means gameplay. And I also wanted a couple of other things, but that just means I write down a list of the key things that make up your game and those things will have to be recorded, which brings me to tip number two, recording your gameplay. Even if you're working with a publisher or another uh, person making your trailer, you're probably gonna end up doing this step yourself anyway. Um, record gameplay because you are the developer, you know best what you want in the trailer, the best kind of shot. So you have to record gameplay. Tip here, uh, don't use music, the game's music, turn it off because if you're gonna cut clips, uh, you don't want the music playing because you kind of cut up the music. You'll add the music later on. So make sure you have music turned off. Sound effects should be turned on because you don't want to do those by hand later. You want them at the right time, the right moment. Um, usually or often you also want the hut or the status bar gone. Um, it can be confusing, especially if you're gonna jump between certain areas of the game that's like energy, an energy bar could be suddenly um, empty, then full again, then half, then it's just confusing for no reason. So remove the status bar as much as possible unless it really adds something to the video or the trailer, but usually you can just ignore it and remove it completely. And um, the final tip, record a little bit more than you're gonna use or a lot more than you're gonna use because you wanna cut and you'll have to cut somewhere. And sometimes you notice that in the edit, you'll have to shift some of the gameplay. You have rather have a couple of seconds later in the clip than the early seconds because of the movement. We'll get to that a little bit, but make sure you just have enough um, surrounding or additional content around the stuff you think you're gonna need because you're gonna need more anyway. When you're recording game clips, also try to minimize the amount of text you have on screen. And dialogues and things like that don't really work because the, the viewer is just very, um, is watching your trailer in a very short amount of time, getting a lot of information. And if there's a dialogue there with a lot of text, 
sometimes it works but usually it's not gonna work there's just too much text for the audience to understand also not everybody is an English or native English speaker or even understands English so a minimum amount of text is actually gonna make your trailer more interesting to a wider audience and then it's on to tip number three or stage number three of creating a trailer uh, you're not gonna create the trailer from start to finish in one sitting um, the first time you're gonna do it you're pretty much gonna find the clips that are on your set list that you create in step number one I think those clips you want to add them to your timeline and then you're gonna probably have to move them around a little bit just to see how the video flows because a very important thing of uh, creating videos is the pace of things and, and the speed of how much action is there you don't want too much every now and then you want to slow down a little bit think about movies or, or tv shows they'll do the same type of things you can't have just pure action although there are some movies that are pure action and they are pretty good but usually you want a little bit of slower content in between so pretty much drop the clips you have on your timeline and start finding out what you have and what you want and in which order and how it flows and it's not going to be the end clips and uh, they're probably going to be replacement clips i did that for gone of power i had various clips that just didn't fit in there or i needed a better version of it or i wanted to show a different character playing those areas and i recorded a couple of the clips uh, three or four times which is the tedious part of creating a game trailer you'll just have to play your game a lot of times obviously if you're the developer as well add certain cheat code thingies and console commands that you can use to quickly get to a certain point or to give yourself certain items that you can then show easily that saves a lot of gameplay time so very important as a developer add in those little things so that you can jump to certain parts in your game and don't have to play through everything every time uh, eventually you'll have a rough timeline of the stuff you want in the trailer um, it's probably going to be way too long anyway you're going to have to cut here and there but you'll at least have the right order and once you have that flow going and you think this is pretty much what i want to show the player or the viewer what my game is about i'm going to be in step number four and that's replacing most or some of those clips and one good example i had in the gun of power trailer is that i had a certain clip scene where i wanted to show a hallway that i have in the game uh, to show different type of rooms and different type of environments and areas but that part of the clip had the player come in at the north uh, move through the hallway to the south while all these spikes from the side were uh, shoving and making the player feel dangerous and uncertain about their survival i guess that's a great clip but the next clip i wanted to have the boss uh, little sequence about boss battles happening and i had the player move in horizontally into that room uh, that felt confusing as as a viewer you're watching the player move downwards and then suddenly you see them go through the door and move in from a side door it just didn't feel right also i knew it was fairly easy to replace either one of those clips so that we have only horizontal movement or only vertical movement And there were many other clips I wanted to redo because as I just gave the tip don't record with a status bar I foolishly actually recorded a bunch of clips with the status bar on I forgot to put in the command that return that removes it so all those clips were pretty uh, useless uh, there was some zooming in I could do here and there but I didn't want to over zoom because it's already pixel art graphics if you zoom it too much it can be done in trailers and can be done very well just don't zoom too much because it's it's just gonna be messy so um, that's the fourth tip once you have your timeline flow replace clips because probably you didn't record the best clip for the best moment on your first try anyway so some of these clips don't feel bad about it it's gonna take time but replace them that brings me to tip number five and that's uh, don't go overboard on special effects and other editing things you can do with your editing software for the simple reason that if it's not in the game and pl players see it in your trailer they expect it from the game so um, I, I had trailers in the past that had certain screen shake effects going on only in the trailer just on the beat a little extra oomph uh, players were put off by that because some players don't like screen shake and everything trembling so they figured there was always going to be screen shake in the game which it wasn't and if it's there it can be turned off anyway but um, those type of things you don't want to over add them in your editing so i uh, try to keep editing at a minimum um, 
I use DaVinci Resolve. I don't think I mentioned that before. I use DaVinci Resolve for editing my trailers. It's a free version I use. There is a paid version, really thinking about getting it because it does have a bunch of extra features that at some point I might actually need for my YouTube videos and other stuff. Uh, but normally you can do everything in the free version and you can create a pretty good trailer using that free version. So DaVinci Resolve, I'm not sponsored by them sadly, but go check it out because it's a good tool. Now this tool also comes with a bunch of special effects and things. Don't use them. Uh, most of them are, some of them are very uh, 80s, 90s home video like things. I mean, it works in Star Wars with the weird fades in and panning things like that but uh, for most trailers it just um, it's, it doesn't really work. Some of the effects I did add to Gone with Power are done manually by just moving the screen a little bit, zooming in very tiny bits just to have a little trembling effect on a beat, on a bass, on, on certain sound effect moments and um, just um, I don't think I maybe some rotation here and there but I didn't do a lot of uh, special effects to it at all because I want to show the game and what the game is about and not how my editing is amazing if that makes sense now I'll give you two more bonus tips so I should have just changed the topic into seven amazing editing tips uh, these bonus tips are purely about editing just common stuff that not everybody knows about um, one of the things is um, I cite eyeline a point of uh, interest for the viewer actually so if I have a camera like this and I'm constantly moving about you're gonna get tired from this and so am I by the way but you pretty much want the viewer to uh, remain focused at a certain point so that means if you're jumping from clip to clip try to have uh, the object the interest object usually um, the player or maybe the crosshair or maybe an enemy uh, at the same spot as the one that was in the previous clip so that the audience doesn't have to move and jump with their eyes from clip to clip and that makes a viewing of a trailer a lot more relaxed for those that view it. So um, that's just a common thing, a common tip. And another tip that's very common, um, that's just cool to do. And even though if you don't notice it, you'll still notice it. One of those things, uh, try to edit certain parts on the beat. So one example in the Gauntlet of Power trailer is uh, my boss sequence, where I show a bunch of the boss fights you have in the game. I decided to edit them on the bass or on the beat of the music. So when you hear the music does a certain thing and that repeats and repeats, it also shows a different clip and another clip and another clip. <laughs> Unless you of course have the music turned off but then it doesn't matter because you still have those shots but it does fit a lot better to the music and I try to do it with a couple of other things here and there just uh, make the music and the images uh, work together as one so trailer creation is not for everybody but there's a lot of good information out there if you want to learn it uh, like I said DaVinci Resolve free version free version is a good program to do it with but there are many other tools you can try it with um, just have to do it every now and then and try to keep it short and i think overall the video for gone of power the trailer took me i think i started on a wednesday afternoon so at like 1 a.m and then did, i think it took me like maybe eight hours ten hours i think that sounds like a lot um it's just one work day i guess i've been but i've been really tinkering with a lot of the details um also had to record a bunch of clips over and over and over again so that took a lot of time and I did some things in between, but about eight hours to get this trailer up and running. And that's also why if you hire somebody else to do it, you're gonna pay a couple of hundred up to a thousand or more dollars. So it's really up to you as a game developer. Do you have the time to invest in it or do you have the money to invest in it? And somewhere in between those decisions, you'll have a great game trailer. Now I'll just have to push that trailer to a bunch of streamers and to a bunch of press outlets and things. So that's gonna be a very boring week, but it's very necessary to do. Also, um, I feel a, bit, a little bit fancy in this because uh, right now it's my fifth year wedding anniversary. Uh, we've been together for 17 years and we're now married for five. So congrats, Aline. I know you're watching at some point. You're always watching my videos. So congrats with me, I guess. Uh, congrats to me with you. And here's to another five or 10 or 15 or 20 or 25. Yeah, it should still all be doable. All right. Uh, thank you all for watching like subscribe comment below hop on the discord come say hi check out the Gauntlet power trailer i posted it last monday which is actually 
in 10 minutes from now as I'm recording this last Monday and I'll see you um, next week's video. That's a lot of stuff at the end. All right, bye.